Carving the Stencil with John Marshall. My preferred method is to simply take the original cartoon and photocopy it directly onto the stencil paper. This works just fine so long as your stencil is within the standard photocopy paper size. Normally in an average photocopy machine the largest size would be 11 inches by 17 inches. You do have to keep in mind that you'll need a border around your image. You would never take the design all the way to the edge. So I photocopied directly onto my stencil paper using high contrast. I have a little extra border all the way around each edge. It's a little bit extra towards this end here, but I can cut that off later. So the next step is to begin carving. I prefer this direct photocopy method because it's one layer of paper, there's no barrier between me and the actual section I'm carving, and there's very little distortion. And of course the carbon paper version offers you those same options. To carve my stencil, I'm going to be using an Exacto brand cutting knife with a number 11 blade as the tip. Make sure you have plenty of extra blades because you're going to be changing often. As far as the shaft itself is concerned, I prefer this rubberized version. The softness of the handle combined with the shaping will keep your hands from becoming as tired as they might otherwise. When you're ready to begin carving, make sure you have good light, a sharp blade, and a good cutting mat. While it is important to cut carefully and accurately, you as the artist do of course have the right to change the design as you proceed. Pull the blade with even pressure, pick up, and reposition the point as necessary. Do this as often as you like. Move the stencil paper, move the cutting mat, move your blade, move your hand, move your arm, use your torso. Make sure you keep your body movements fluid as you cut the stencil imagery. While cutting, try to keep the blade somewhat perpendicular to the surface of the paper. The main reason is simply to be able to clearly see the tip of the blade and to know exactly where it is that you're cutting. Reposition your paper as often as necessary to make it easier to cut the lines. Never under any circumstances try to make your blade go sideways. If you do so, you'll simply snap the tip and of course wind up having to change blades. If you've cut the paper properly, the scrap piece should lift away as easily as mine does here, with no fuzz, no snag, no um, difficulty in removing it. Let's try that again. I want to create smooth lines with fluid movement. This is best achieved by moving my arms, my torso, my entire body. Never under any circumstances saw when using the X-Acto blade method. This will give you very coarse, jagged lines. Again, pull with smooth, even pressure. Use your arm, use your hands, use your torso, use your entire body to maintain a fluid movement of line. Don't try to bend your knife around the corner. Bring it to a sharp, abrupt stop, pick it up, replace it, and again, cut smoothly and evenly, stop, pick up the blade, and reposition it. If you follow this ritual, you'll find that the pieces lift out very easily. Turn the paper as necessary, turn your body as necessary, change blades often. Your cartoon is, after all, just a guide. Don't be too overly picky about following your lines. It is your design. It's far more important to keep the movement and flow of the in imagery intact. You really want to concentrate on movement and beauty of line. If you're so strict, and so worried about staying precisely in the lines, you're going to wind up with a lifeless, unengaging piece. There is another important point we'll need to consider. This is, after all, a repeating pattern, and therefore we're going to need to cut all the way to the left. However, when it comes to the right-hand section, I'm going to stop short. I'm actually not going to cut this section within about an inch of the edge of my design. However, when it comes to the top border, I will cut to the edge, but for the bottom section, I'll allow the same margin of uncut design. So let's fast forward to that point and I'll show you how to handle it. I finished carving the majority of my stencil and as I mentioned earlier, I carved right up to the top border all the way to the left border, but I did not cut all the way to the right nor to the bottom. 
because I want to make sure that I have an accurate register. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is to make sure that my stencil is indeed square. I do this by first punching a tiny hole using my traditional Japanese hole punch in the upper left hand corner. Having done so, I'm going to go ahead and punch another hole in the lower left hand corner to give myself two points from which to square. I'm going to take a ruler and very carefully measure the diagonal. I'm going to measure over what looks like to be about 13 and 3 8 inches and punch my hole. The trick here is to measure over accurately from that lower left hand register dot. So in order to get a truly accurate measurement before punching, what I'm going to want to do is measure the distance between the two dots I've already punched on the left hand border. I'm going to take that same measurement, because of course I want the dots on the right hand side to be the same distance, and give myself a guideline with a white pencil so I can have sort of a rough ballpark of the area in which it's supposed to hit. Having done this, I'm now going to go back Double check again my diagonal measurement just to make sure I'm remembering correctly. And yes, indeed, I can see it's 13 and 3 eighths. Now I go back to that first dot again, match it up very carefully at the corner, find my 13 and 3 eighths mark, and there I go. That X portion gives me the exact spot that I should punch my last register dot. As long as the measurement between two dots of one diagonal are equal to the distance between two dots of the other diagonal, you will have an exactly square stencil. Next, take a scrap of clean white paper and place it under your upper carved border. I've prepared some inks. They're actually a gondo type of dye pigments. I have green and I have brown and I also have two surikomi brushes that I'm going to use to apply the colors. The first color I'm going to use is the green, and even though you want a good deep color, you also don't want it too juicy. So I'm going to use this paper towel to blot off some of the moisture. That will keep it from bleeding under the stencil as I apply the dye. You must be very careful to catch the register dot with the ink. Keep the surikomi brush perpendicular to the paper while rubbing in a circular motion. Take care not to allow the stencil to shift in any way, and be very careful not to make your brush so juicy with dye that it causes the ink to bleed under the paper. Let's see how we've done. As you can see, we have a very accurate reproduction of our carved design. We'll use this reproduction to test our next section.